Ayan. Hello once again. Good morning, everyone. And we will start our program. Again, before our program, we have a few reminders. First, please turn off your camera and mute your microphone during our speaker's presentation to avoid any distraction. Okay, later on, we will have a Q&A portion and you can post your questions in the chat box. And we will answer them during the right time. And that is during the Q&A portion. And pwede na rin po kayong maglagay ng questions habang nagsasalita ang ating speaker. Pero yun nga po, gago, uh, sasagutin po natin siya sa ating Q&A portion. There. Please ask your questions as concise as possible and avoid lengthy introductions or opinions. Also, please avoid using the chat box for socialization while the presentation is in progress so that others will not be distracted. And lastly, of course, your feedback is valuable to us para sa ating mga future webinars pa. Please make sure that you will evaluate this webinar. The link will be given before we close this uh, webinar and ilalagay po natin yun sa ating chat box. Only those who attended the webinar and submitted the accomplished evaluation form will receive an e-certificate of participation. Also, may we remind everyone to refrain from distributing the evaluation link to other people who are not able to attend this webinar. And this is to uh, avoid, I mean, to be fair no, with all of us. And lastly, mamaya po magkakaroon tayo ng picture taking before we end uh, or we close this meeting room para ma-verify din po natin ang ating mga magsasagot sa webinar evaluation link. And that's all for our reminders. Now to open our program, may I ask Teacher Leah Magtoto for her welcoming welcome remarks. Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome one and all to the second installment of our webinars on differentiated instruction. We are pleased to see all of you here despite the rain and earthquake this morning. Um, this, and um, we hope that you're really joining us from safe and secure locations. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our Division of Curriculum and Instruction Chairperson, Dr. Edwin. Edwina Eleanor Paderna, and our colleague in SPED, Dr. Lutze Sol Vidal. Thank you very much for your support. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of teachers, alumni, parents, and current students who are here with us today. May you all find this knowledge in this day's sharing to be helpful in improving learning delivery. Um, May I also use this um, opportunity to thank our two priest teams from the SPED area for really facilitating the two webinars that we've had. I'm glad to note that um, your heart of service still extends towards the SPED area and we hope to see you in many more educational forums like this. Okay, so I hope that you enjoy today. Just make sure that you're safe. Wow, thank you so much, Teacher Leah. And it's also nice to see you in this webinar. <laughs> Ayan, thank you so much, Paul. Oh, yeah, thank you. And to introduce our speaker today, may I call on Teacher Lutze Vidal? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good rainy morning. Our speaker this morning is an assistant professor of special education at the University of the Philippines College of Education in Diliman, Quezon City. She earned her Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences at UP Manila and her Master's Degree in Special Education at UP Diliman. She is currently a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Education, major in Special Education. Uh, we are positive that she's going to graduate next semester. 
Um, in EDUC, we call her Teacher Mighty. She teaches undergraduate and graduate students in courses such as Teaching the Gifted, Inclusive Education, and other uh, methods courses. She also mentors graduate students in the conduct of their research. Um, and she herself is actively involved in research on inclusive education. She has presented several papers in local and international conferences, her recent work being uh, involving uh, teaching educators and policymakers in the country and even in other countries, make the general education curriculum more accessible to learners with special educational needs. She works closely with the Department of Education Bureau of Learning Del Delivery Student Inclusion Division, the National Council on Disability Affairs, and non-government organizations as consultant and uh, resource speaker on special education, inclusive education, and gifted education. Help me welcome Professor Myra Trinidad T. Tantenko. You're muted, Mike. Mike, you're muted. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So rewind that then. Uh, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Um, okay. All right. Um, I'm very glad that all of you are here. There are 97 of us um, in in the meeting, and uh, that's a lot more than what. Uh, who, than who were present uh, two weeks ago. No? So I'm, I'm glad you're all here despite the rains, despite the earthquake, and uh, I hope you are all dry and safe. So today, um, let me just share the screen and we'll begin. Sandali uh, lamang. Okay, so, so here it is. All right. Um, last, uh, well, two weeks ago, um, nagbigay ako ng overview of uh, differentiating instruction. And so before we, we begin the topic for today, I'd like to go over some of the main points of that presentation. Una-una, uh -huh. isa sa, ating, uh, sa aking diniscuss last week is the reality that all of our classrooms are composed of a very diverse group of students. Kung titingnan natin, ang ating mga estudyante, iba-iba sila sa edad, sa age, uh, sa, sa age, sa gender, sa even sa sexual orientation, sa religion, ang dami-daming dami -dami aspeto na kung saan sila ay nagkakaiba-iba. And um, oftentimes, itong mga pagkakaiba nila ay nakakaapekto sa kanilang pagkatuto, sa kanilang pagparticipate in learning. Um, let's take socioeconomic status, for instance. Alam natin na Pag ang, ang isang mag-aaral ay nasa mataas na estado socio-economically, ay mayroon siyang access sa napakaraming um, cultural and social capital, no? maliban sa economic capital. So ang mga batang yan ay maaaring may access sa mga encyclopedia sa technology, uh, lagi silang may wifi um, sa bahay, um, hopefully laging ayos. Um, mayroong access sila sa mga libro, sa mga library. Pero kung ang isang bata naman ay nandun sa mas mababang estado, socioeconomically, uh, maaaring mayroong kagi may kagipitan at dahil dito ay Ma ay apektado yung access niya sa teknolohiya, sa mga babasahin sa bahay, 
um, sa sa cultural and social capital na nae-enjoy ng ibang mga bata. And so, um, when they come into our classroom, dala-dala nila ang iba't ibang um, home experiences, yung mga learning backgrounds nila, yung kanilang mga kapital uh, na gagamitin nila sa pagkatuto. At uh, kaya nga masasabi natin, there's no such thing as, as a typical uh, grade 4 student, for instance, because all of them vary. No? We have a very diverse classroom, kahit anumang level iyon. All right. Um, one of the things that um, Diane... Um, uh, just a minute. I, I'm just removing something. All right. One of the things that Diane Hickox uh, reminded us is to examine our learners' characteristics. Dahil itong mga characteristics na ito ang magiging batayan kung paano natin i-differentiate ang ating mga leksyon. So, una, titingnan natin kailangan ay ang kanilang readiness levels. Do they have the, the prerequisite knowledge and skills for them to learn what we are going to teach them today? Because one thing we need to understand is that um, they will only learn, they will learn what we're trying to teach them today um, based on um, their understanding of the knowledge, uh, of the prerequisite knowledge. So kung shaky ang kanilang pre, prerequisite knowledge and skills, magiging uh, mahirap din para sa kanila na matutunan yung mga knowledge and skills that they, we want them to acquire. Also, um, we need to make sure that uh, based on their readiness levels, we provide a certain amount of challenge in learning para sila ay patutoy, pat, patuloy, I'm sorry, patuloy na matuto, patuloy na ma-encourage ma na, na mag-participate. No? Kasi pag masyadong ma, uh, madali yung kanilang pag-aaralan, alam na nila yun eh. So ang mangyayari, they, they, it's it's highly possible that they're no long, they will not be interested in what you're going to teach because ang sasabihin nila, alam ko na yan eh. No? Or some students would say, alam mo, gusto ko sa klase ni Sir Robert. No? Kung sino man yun. Um, sasabihin nila, gusto ko, gusto ko si Teacher Robert kasi sa klase niya, pathetics, pathetics lang kami. Kasi nga, walang challenge. No? Um, Another thing we have to look at are their learning styles. Our students learn in different ways. No? There are visual learners, kinesthetic learners, um, auditory learners. There are learners who, who learn better if they could, could uh, touch things. No? So, kung alam natin yung learning styles nila, then we can design um, learning activities that would tap those learning styles and encourage them to join. And the third thing that we need to, to examine are their interests. Kasi kung alam natin yung, uh, yung mga interests ng ating mga estudyante, then we can provide um, activities that also um, tap into their interests and it would no longer be difficult to encourage them to participate kasi uh, internally or intrinsically motivated na, na sila. No? However, gusto ko rin ilagay dito na kailangan alam din natin kung ano ba ang magiging value ng ng lesson na ating ituturo sa kanila. Um, kasi kung it, makikita nila yung value nito, 
uh, sa buhay nila at sa buhay ng kanilang pamilya, then there will also be a degree of external motivation um, sa ating pag uh, sa, sa kanilang pag-participate. No? So we look at these three things again: their readiness levels, their learning styles, and their interests. Okay. So when we have an idea of the characteristics of our learners, the, this information now becomes the basis for differentiating the way we teach. No? Um, at ang ating pagtuturo po, ang ating pagdi-differentiate ay um, nasa apat na aspeto ng ng ating curriculum. Una ay ang content or what they need to learn. Second is the process or how they are going to learn what they need to learn. And the third is the product or how are they going to demonstrate what they have learned. No? At ang pang-apat, i-differentiate natin yung learning environment. As I, um, yung, depende doon sa ating lesson na, or learning activity na ipet-present sa kanila, ma yung learning environment natin ay kailangan flexible. Some learners would like to work in groups no? and, and move about. But then you will notice that there are some learners who are quite happy learning just sitting on their chair and reading the material. And so, uh, may ibat ibang um, learning environments na kailangan na, na conducive for our students. So, again, apat ang areas na maaari nating i-differentiate. We differentiate in the content, the process, the product, and the learning environment. Okay, now, those were the key points uh, two weeks ago. So today, I'm going to share on um, tiering assignments. This is one approach for differentiating instruction. And uh, these are the, the objectives of um, our uh, webinar today. At the end of the webinar, I am hoping that you would be able to define, uh, to define differentiating instruction by tiering assignments. Okay, so yun ang kailangan na intindihan ninyo. What is tiering assignments? No? Second, uh, you should be able to identify and explain different ways of structuring tiered assignments. Anim po yan. The third objective is for you to uh, analyze applications of tiering assignments. And that's why later I'm going to give you examples and I would like you to look at those examples very well. Um, I-analyze niyo for you to, to see the differences of the parallel activities. And finally, I am hoping that you would be able to generate tiered assignments, not just during the webinar, but even afterwards, beyond the webinar. No? So later, I'm going to give you some scenarios at uh, kailangan po ninyong mag-isip ano kayang activity ang aking ibibigay, a parallel activity para sa aking mga estudyante. <clears throat> okay, here are the references <clears throat> that I, I, um, I used in preparing uh, this presentation. Um, for math teachers, the, the material of Adams and Pierce are, are quite insightful. Um, Conklin and Sorel is a book um, that uh, 
is found in the UP College of Education library. I'm sorry, wala po akong link niyan. But Cox's um, Differentiated Instruction Strategies is available online. No? Um, Diane Hecox um, is, is Diane Hecox's books are the uh, main reference for this uh, presentation, no? And um, yung, yung kanyang lesson on tiered assignments ay makikita nyo sa internet. Uh, New South Wales government and uh, tiered assignments uh, through uh, the Dublin School are also available online. And finally, we have the materials of uh, Carol Ann Tomlinson, whom I have mentioned several times uh, two weeks ago. No? The differentiated classroom, um, I believe this is, this is a, a book that you can download. No? All right. So, pag sinabi ba nating tears or, or tearing, ano ba ibig sabihin nito? No? Ang, ang salitang tier, ang ibig sabihin po niyan ay mayroong row or level, uh, one on top of the other or one after the other. Parang hagdanan, parang rice tierraces. <laughs> no? uh, para din itong cake na nandito sa, sa ating screen. Um, you have a two-tiered and a three-tiered cake. No? So one on top of the other. So pag sinabi po nating tiering assignments, we have at least two um, kinds of activities uh, that are provided at the same time. All right. So ito po ang nangyayari sa tiered assignments. No? Base doon sa uh, readiness level ng estudyante, base sa kanilang learning styles and interests, we need to create uh, parallel tasks. In this um, illustration, we, we have three parallel tasks that move at the same time towards one goal or one concept or one outcome. No? Um, Possible na, na iisa ang kanilang goal, but um, they're going to reach that goal in three different ways. Maari din they're learning the same concept, but uh, they're learning the concept. They're accessing different resources to learn the concept. At maari din um, iisa ang outcome, but the process is different, no? So, yan po ang nangyayari sa tiered assignments. We provide um, parallel assignments or parallel activities for them to work on uh, that move towards a certain goal, a certain concept, or a certain outcome. All right. Now, there are six ways of structuring... Um, our tiered assignments. We can do it by challenge. We can tier by complexity. We can tier by the resources that we will um, provide access to. We can tier by the learning outcomes. We can tier by the process. And we can tier by the products or Yung, yung output na magpapakita kung ano ang kanilang natutunan. Alright, so uh, let's begin looking at uh, the different um, tiering structures. Unang-una ay yung tiering by challenge level. No? Um, sa ganitong structure po ay ginagamit natin yung Bloom's Taxonomy. Or, um, in, as, as you can see um, in the slide, this is the revised Bloom's taxonomy. No? And, and this will become the guide 
in how we uh, differentiate our lesson according to challenge. Kasi po, may mga estudyante na, okay, so ito po ay mga cognitive cognitive abilities. Ano? Um, dito sa bandang baba, yung mga lower order thinking skills at paakyat po ng paakyat hanggang maging uh, sa higher order thinking skills. Ngayon, ang ating mga estudyante, maaaring mayroon tayo, mayroon ilan sa kanila who might still be um, performing doon sa uh, lower uh, thinking skills, no? lower thinking abilities. And so, pwede tayong mag-provide sa kanila ng activity according to to the, the challenge. So, for instance, ang, ang alam natin na nagagawa ng studyante, no, siguro, um, let's say, mayroon siyang intellectual uh, you know, uh, disability or, or problem in understanding. And maaaring ang nagagawa lang na for now is remembering. And so, as you teach that topic, then ang challenge na maibibigay natin sa kanya ay uh, ma, ma, magamit niya yung, yung ma-recall niya or ma-remember yung information and then challenge him or her to go one step further by um, by um, challenging the student to explain ideas or concepts. No? So, so, lagi po na we start where they are, but we always provide an amount of challenge. Now, there are some students who may be functioning dito, nandito na sila sa applying. So, we provide, you can provide an activity that requires them to use the information in a new way, but also challenge them to distinguish between different parts. Kaya dyan po pumapasok yung activities that would require them to compare and to contrast or to critique or to discriminate. No? And then there are those students who already know this. They can already analyze. No? So we move them a step further, T uh, providing them activities that would challenge them to, to evaluate and make a, a stand, no? or even create a new product. No? So, for instance, ko ang pinag-aaralan ay isang topic. No? They're, they're learning the same topic, but then they're going to learn it according uh, in different challenge levels. No? Now, uh, nais ko pong i-share dito that not, um, students are not always at the same level of thinking in all content areas. So maaring, for instance, there are students who are very good in math. And they could be functioning dito na, na higher order thinking skills na sila sa math and sciences. Pero for instance, sa pagdating sa, sa, sa writing, maaaring dito pa lamang sila sa applying, sa applying or analyzing. So um, hindi po sila uh, sa lahat ng subject areas ay nasa parehong level of, of challenge. And, and that's why um, kailangan inaanalisa uh, talaga ng bawat content area teacher ang abilidad ng mga bata. Now, let me give you an example of a tiered assignment that uh, at different challenge levels. Okay. Um, this is from um, the learning material that I shared from Hecox. Um, nagbigay siya ng dalawang examples. No? Mayroong isa na para doon sa application level. 
at ang isa ay nandoon sa level ng analysis no so for those who are in the application level ito po ang kanyang pinagagawa no after reviewing information about frogs and toads from the department of natural resources record the characteristics of each on a chart so ia apply nila yung knowledge nila in recording the characteristics of frogs and toads mga different types of amphibians no all right no so those are for students who are in the application level or maybe lower and then you're challenging them to apply no eto naman ngayon ang para sa students na gusto nating i-challenge para mag-analyze no after reviewing information about frogs and toads from the nat from the department of natural resources compare and contrast these amphibians by means of a venn diagram okay do you see how the the challenge is differentiated for these two groups of students yung isa Ire record lamang yung characteristics of the frogs and the toads in a chart, no? Pero yung isang grupo ay nandun na sa comparing and contrasting. Also, take note, they are using the same material, the material from the part from the Department of Natural Resources. They're not learning um uh, different materials, no? Pero yung challenge na binibigay as they learn about frogs and toads ay magkaiba ng level, no? Kasi yung isa, china challenge natin to move up to the application level while another group ay china challenge na natin doon sa analysis level. So this is, um, these are um, differentiated lessons or activities in the elementary level. Now, let's see, paano ang application nito sa high school? All right. Again, uh, Diane Hecox provided um, an example. Sabi niya, for students whom we would like to challenge uh, na mag-apply, Eto ang lesson. Review the ads in a teen magazine. Identify each by propaganda technique. So obviously, they, they just had a lesson on uh, different propaganda techniques, no? such as bandwagon, testimonial, or slogan. So yun yung three types na pinag-aralan nila. No? So uh, for, for those in this level, Ang gagawin nila, identify the different propaganda techniques in the ads in the teens' magazines, and then they will make a collage or poster illustrating the techniques that they found. No? So yun ang application. Tingnan natin kung ano ang, less, ang, ang learning activity for students who are whom we want to challenge to analyze and evaluate. Ang activity nila ay review the ads in a teen magazine. Examine the characteristics of an ideal boy, uh, an ideal teen girl and boy portrayed in the ad. Create a collage or poster to share your conclusion about adver advertisers' port portrayal of ideal teens. Okay, take note. They're using the same resources, teenage magazines. All right? And they're going to create the same, um, you know, similar, similar, um, products, a collage, or a poster. Pero yung challenge ay magkaiba. No? 
dito sa analyze and evaluation, mas malalim na yung challenge na binibigay for the students. Kasi not only will they examine, no, kailangan um, uh, i-evaluate nila ngayon. Ano ba ang sinasabi nitong, ano ba yung pinapakita ng mga ads ano yung pinep sinasabi nila na an ideal teenager should look like or dress up na uh, dress like na pero dito sa application level ine-examine lang ko ano yung mga techniques na ginamit all right so they're learning the same thing accessing the same resources and even producing uh, the same um, similar uh, posters or collages, but the but the challenge given to them are different. All right. So I I hope uh, that's clear. So tingnan nga natin. Alam ko may hinanda akong ayan activity na pwede nating pag-isipan, no? So eto ngayon ang an activity for instance for students who are functioning on grade level no uh, the on grade level students are tasked to discuss the author's purpose for writing the assigned short story so dito makikita natin uh, pinag-aaralan nila ay short story uh, possibly yung different elements of the short story but but there are yung yung um, on grade level students are asked to analyze ano ba ang rason kung bakit sinulat ito ng author no so eto ngayon ang aking tanong uh, whoops what parallel activity will you provide to challenge remembering or understanding ability okay. hindi natin babaguhin yung yung topic no uh, they're still going to work on the short story but for students who are um, nandoon sa challenge ng remembering and understanding ano kaya ang activity na pwede ninyong uh, ibigay sa kanila could you uh, please uh, put your answers on the chat box thank you uh, and i'll open my chat box okay Next, huh? um, my 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 pointer is not uh, per cooperating. All right, so let's see. Asan ba yung ating chat? Oh, ito. Ano kaya ang uh, meron na ba kayong naisip? Siguro yung mga nagtuturo ng, ng um, short stories sa, sa elementary school, meron na ba kayong naisip na maaaring parallel activity para dito? Um, Alright, no? Teacher Leia said, identify the different parts of the story. Tama po yun, no? Maaaring, ang, ang maaaring hihingi natin sa kanila ay, ay i-identify, no? Okay, ito from Teacher Elaine, uh, list the names of the characters in the story. Now, pwede din po yun. You will, you will notice na uh, remembering and understanding ito. Um, someone said maybe we could use the sequence diagram oops, uh, mabilis eh, uh, to test their ability to sequence the events in the story. Yes, you can do that. No? So 
Very good po. Maganda po yung inyong mga mga suggestiones, no? Uh, of course, depende yan sa objective ng inyong ng inyong um, activity for the lesson, ano? Pero so far, so far ang nakikita ko ay uh, nakakapagbigay kayo ng ng activity sa na lower order thinking skills. All right. So Punta tayo sa susunod na na challenge. Ito naman ay what parallel activity will you provide to challenge the evaluating and creating ability of other students? No, oh, isulat niyo rin po iyon sa I'm uh, sandali lamang. All right. No, so tingnan natin yung mga sagot. Uh, okay, a book report. Pwedeng a book report. Uh, summarize the story. Uh, summarizing maybe um, uh, more on understanding and application pero siguro sagot yon doon sa tanong kadina okay uh, evaluating and creating ability sabi ni teacher fritzel what is your favorite part in the story and why no okay so um, ano kaya ito no parang parang preschool level no all right sabi oh ito from teacher Claire, compose your own ending of the story. Great, no? Uh, Makakapag-create sila. Ma Maiisip nila, paano ko ba babaguhin ito? I don't like the ending at all. Parang, para bang yung, um, ano ba yun? Yung sa El Filibusterismo. <laughs> I didn't like the ending when I, when I read it in high school. You know? So, ano kayang... Uh, babaguhin ko sa ending ng El Filibusterismo ni Jose Rizal para para mag-iiba ang, ang kahihinatnan. Okay, ask them to draw how they understood the story with a short sentence based on their drawing. Alright. Um, so, ito ay... Um, so gagawa sila ng artwork, no? Okay, so may creating doon. However, parang may may creating, however, teacher Joe, parang ang hinihingi pa rin natin sa kanila ay understanding, no? So maaring dito pa yan sa isang level. Okay. Retelling their story using their own understanding and own words that would still be understanding. Okay. Uh, Sir Mark said, create a short story of desired genre and identify your purpose of creating that short story. Okay, mukhang pang high school na to, no? So, pwede po, no? Pwede po iyang um, activity na yan. Um, Alright. No? So, um, nakita ko naman po na na-apply na ninyo yung... Oops. Uh, uh, nakikita ko that you understand what it means to tier assignments no, by complexity. Oh, now let's go to the second structure, no? second way of structuring tiered assignments, and that is by complexity. Now, this might be, um, actually, to be honest with you, when I was studying this uh, several months ago, sabi ko, saan ba nagkakaiba ang tiering by complexity? appearing by challenge no kasi parang pareho 
parang may similarity. And totoo po, may, may similarity po yan. But let us uh, look at the description given by, by uh, Diane, Diane Hecox on, on what is tearing by complexity. She said that it is addressing the needs of the student who are at introductory levels of learning as well as those who are ready for more abstract, analytical, in-depth, and advanced work. So kung yung tearing by challenge is, um, uses uh, Bloom's taxonomy, dito naman po ang tinitingnan ay gaano ba ka-simple, or ka-complex yung pinagagawa natin sa kanila. There are students who are still at the, who may be at the introductory level. And so we will, you know, let's introduce the topic first to them. So iba yung activity na maaari nating, uh, uh, iba yung complexity ng activity na ibibigay natin sa kanila. But for those who are, um, ready for more analytical uh, work, then iba rin ang ating ibibigay sa kanila na, na level of complexity of activity. All right? So, let's look at the examples given by Diane Hecox. <clears throat> okay. Diane, sandali. Uh, okay. Diane Hecox um, gave these examples. No? Yung isa, and this is not arranged in order of, uh, say, um, complexity. No? Uh, sandali lamang. All right. No? So yung isang activity ay create an informational brochure that presents various positions on an environmental issue related to rainforests. Na alala ko tuloy yung, yung topic sa NSTP na environmental uh, preservation no? or protection. Determine your position on the issue and present a convincing argument for it in your brochure. All right. So, yung pangalawang activity, a parallel activity, create an informational brochure that will inform your classmates about the environmental issue related to rainforests. No? And number three, create an informational brochure that will inform your classmates of different points of view about an environmental issue related to rainforests. Again, please take note, they're learning the same topic, rainforests and the issues um, related to uh, rainforests. No? So please take note that um, dito po, Yung, yung lesson, yung, yung task two, no? ay gagawa din sila ng brochure, pero kumbaga information lamang about the issues related to rainforest ang nakalagay. No? So it's very, kumbaga, um, uh, informational, uh, factual lamang ang, ang hinihingi na, na uh, complexity. No? All right. Dito po sa isa, sa yung, yung task number three, uh, ang hinihingi po sa mga estudyante ay um, kailangan ay maipakita nila yung different uh, perspectives regarding um, environmental issues. No? Uh, sa patungkol sa sa rainforest no so must must complex because now they have to show different points of view but dito sa activity number 1 which is for 
for um, the other group of students sa kanila hindi lamang nila ipe-present yung different positions no but they have to determine their own position on the issue no and then present their argument bakit ganyan ang 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 pananaw ko dito all right so they're learning the same thing but yung level of complexity of the tasks are different all right now sasabihin niyo uh, teacher paano to edi edi ang matututunan lang ng grupo na gumagawa nito ay puro puro information ito naman puro point different points of view at ito naman kanya-kanyang uh, opinion yes but if after they have worked on their activities magkakaroon kayo ng isang panahon na magagather sila and the different groups will present what they learned then they are given the opportunity to share what they learned, to share their output, and to teach one another. No? Yung, yung, yung natutunan nila. So even the students who created this will not stay at that uh, level of information kasi malalaman nila yung different points of view and they will also uh, um, hear the stand of their classmate and their reasons for such a stand. All right? So dito, um, I hope clear sa example ni Diane Hecox kung gano uh, na, na nag-iiba-iba yung complexity ng mga tasks even while students are learning the same thing, the same topic. All right? So, let's... Okay. O, etong naman ang aking ipagagawa sa inyo. Uh, so, here's the task. After reading articles on bullying and its effects on children, students will conduct a survey among their peers on their awareness and understanding of the issue. They will design a short survey questionnaire and present their findings using charts or as a news report. So makikita ninyo, wow, parang napaka complicated nito ano dahil magbabasa sila magkakonduct ng survey tapos gagawa sila ng questionnaire and after finding the data they have to present their findings uh, by means of a chart or mag mag uh, mag da drama drama sila ng news reporting okay so anong paggagawa natin ngayon all right. Oops. Where are you? Okay. So if that was the task for students who were more um, um, ready for more um, analytical, more co um, um, challenging activities, what parallel activity will you create for students who are at the introductory level still? No? Maaring ngayon pa lamang nila ma malalaman yung tungkol sa bullying and its effects. No? Or maybe, uh, you know, um, yung level of understanding nila is, is not uh, as high as the others. And so you need to differentiate. Excuse me po. All right. Um, sandali lang because I'm, I'm trying to fix this uh, okay so isip po tayo and then um,
Okay, so let's see. Um, pasensya na po. There was, there is an emergency going on, and so I had to uh, stop the video and uh, mute myself. Okay. All right. According to teacher Esme, um, present a simple scenario of bullying. This is a group activity. Then after presenting the scene, one member will explain the effects of bullying. Good. No? Enumerate the different ways um, on how bullying is manifested and its effects on the student's well-being. Puede po. No? Or pwede din na uh, ang pagpapakitan uh, so so paano nila ipapakita ito maaring i-dramatize maaring written maaring i-drawing nila no gagawa sila ng artwork showing the different effects of bullying all right so uh okay naman yung mga yung mga examples given ano okay Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the third way of structuring um, tiered assignments is by tiering by resources. Ibig sabihin, um, the students are going to, to uh, learn, uh, they're going to have the same um, outcomes, you know, learning outcomes. They, it's also possible that they can have the same uh, product, but they will learn uh, whatever it is they need to learn by um, through different resources. And here are some examples. Maaari pong magbigay tayo ng reading materials at different re reading levels and complexity of content. No, I think I have an example here of, um, yeah, kinuha ko to, eh, dito muna po tayo, kinuha ko to sa aklat ni Conklin and Sorel. Um, Conklin and Sorel presented um, differentiated uh, materials, no, for the, the students who are supposed to study uh, different kinds of rocks, so may igneous rocks, uh, you know, the, the three kinds of rocks. And ginroup ng teacher, yung students, uh, and, and uh, depende sa grupo yung reading level nila. So look at this, the first one. Uh, this is the first uh, paragraph, introductory paragraph only, no? There are many kinds of rocks in an amazing variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and textures. Regardless of their differences, all rocks have some common characteristics, uh, uh, some characteristics in common. Rocks are made naturally of smaller particles and minerals that are stuck together. Minerals are naturally occurring substances that earth or organisms on earth produce. No, they form crystals and are made of specific chemicals. Now, according to the, to, to the reading ability of the students, nag provide yung teacher the same material, same introduction, but you will see the, the levels, the reading levels. No? Uh, to save on time, let's look at, at uh, the one on the rightmost. No? Ang, ang pagsulat nito ay simple lamang. Short sentences ang ginagamit. And many of the difficult words present in the first were taken out. No? So ang nakasulat na ay, there are many kinds of rocks. Rocks have many shapes and sizes. They have many colors and textures. They are natural. They are made of smaller particles and minerals that are stuck together. A mineral is a thing found in nature. They are made by earth. They are also made by living things on earth. All right. So, um, dito po makikita ninyo the same introductory paragraph 
but presented at different reading levels. No? Um, so, yun. So, pwede natin gawin yan by uh, i-differentiate yung reading material according to the reading level or even sa complexity ng content. No? Maybe uh, yung isa ay uh, simple lamang, you know, simple lamang yung content, very straightforward, pero maaaring for another group ay, ay yung marami ng technical, na, technical words or, or mas, mas uh, detalyado yung proseso na, na um, ibinabahagi. All right. Another way of tiering assignments is by assigning different kinds of resources. So, maaring para sa iba, reference books. Yung iba, newspapers and magazines. Pwede naman yung iba, titingnan nila yung mga diary and journals of, of uh, famous people. Pwede naman na um, um, internet site, no? Um, no, web website but uh, for for young children you need to be very um, very careful about this no yung pag ano ng website uh, all right and then another way is uh, kung ay kung uh, maaari din silang mag interview ng community members no oh ito pala yung bookmarked website Kumbaga, ibig sabihin niyan ay kung meron kayong computer room, naka-bookmark naka na yung computer doon na ang bubuksan lamang, ang mabubuksan lamang ng mga studyante ay yung mga website na sinabi ninyo. Hindi sila pwedeng uh, umalagwa, you know, parang kite na naputol sa string. Alright? So, sa ganyang paraan po ay tinetier ang um, resources. So let's look at an example. Okay. Ah, hindi pala example ano. Uh, Pag-iisipin ko agad kayo. All right. So the subject is health. The topic is healthy living. No, and the task is this. All the group, everyone has to identify the top five healthy habits of children and briefly explain their benefits. Create a poster to share your findings. This doesn't have to be a group work. Pwede nga ito, individual work lang. No? But you have to give the students the freedom to choose uh, or decide kung anong resources ang kanilang gagamitin. So my question is this. What differentiated resources can you assign to your students? Please put your answers on the chat box. Okay, pwede, according to teacher, teacher Leia, use health magazines, pwede health magazines. Uh, teacher Elaine said blogs, interviews, and magazines, yes. Uh, science books or journals, yes. So depending on on um, the ability of the students to to read and understand these, ano, uh, and para maging mapanuri din sila, no? O meron pa ba iba? No? So health magazines, vlogs, interviews. O pag nag-interview, teacher Elaine, Sino kaya ang i-interviewin? Okay? Pwede ding, pwede ding tumingin ng mga infographics according to Teacher Junard and medical blogs according, blogs according to uh, Sir Charlie. Alright. Now, pag mag interview sino kaya ang i-interviewin? There, nadi-differentiate ulit. No? So, kung titingnan natin ito, Okay, the task is to identify the top five healthy habits of children and briefly explain their benefits. So, maaaring ang resource nila, isa, no? If they want to do 
um, interviews of people, ang isang resource nila ay children themselves. I-interviewin nila yung mga bata. Ano ba yung healthy habit mo? Bakit bakit ito ang ang um, ay mahalaga sa iyo? Ano ba ang ano ba ang benefit ng brushing your teeth two or three times a day, di ba? Now, so you you can the, the children can interview yung peers nila. Or they can also interview a say uh, several pediatricians di ba? Oh, sino pa maaring parents, no? So so uh, uh, pero ang maganda talaga diyan yung mag-interview sila ng kanilang kapwa, no? Uh, all right. So tingnan nga natin yung iba. Ayan, sabi ni Teacher Daisy, interview health professionals fellow teens in Facebook, okay, uh, data from either health centers, DOH websites, or newspaper articles, uh, health professional interviews, and a survey of mothers, no? So, see, you can, <laughs> you have, uh, you know, uh, minsan sa sabi, paano ba din differentiate See, kayo, nakakaisip kayo na iba't ibang resources and, and you can apply this. All right? You might already be doing this, hindi nyo lang alam na, ay, nag-differentiate na pala ako by cared assignments, by, by, by uh, resources. Uh, so, uh, makikita nyo na, na it's not really that hard to do. All right? Okay, the fourth way of structuring your tiered assignments is by tiering by outcomes. You know, yung learning outcomes. Di ba pag sinabi natin learning outcomes, these are the things that the students will learn in that lesson. Now, here's another example give, given by Hecox. No? Ang topic nila, because it's an American book, uh, uh, pinag-aaralan nila social justice. Uh, I hope pinag-aaralan din yan sa ating araling panlipunan. Pero ang resource nila ay uh, isang speech ni Dr. Martin Luther King. Yung I have a dream. Alright? So, ang basic task na binigay ni, uh, doc, ni Diane Hecox is this. Just the basic task. Think about Dr. King's dream of social justice as presented in his speech. Create a visual representation of his ideas. Okay, so think of outcomes, huh? not, not um, product. Okay, outcomes po ang ating pag titingnan dito. Ano pa? Okay. Here's the advanced the task for more advanced students, no? Ang task sa kanila ay think about the United States today. What other dreams of social justice do you believe have surfaced in response to new issues and concerns? Create a visual representation of your ideas. Okay, take note. They're learning about social justice. Uh, the output is the same. A visual representation of ideas. Pero for, for those who are working on the basic task, ang learning outcome nila ay to identify ideas of social justice in a historical uh a historical document like a speech of Dr. Martin Luther King. All right. So, tiniting ang, ang learning outcome dito ay for them to to um, hindi lamang identify but to express ideas of social justice from historical uh, materials, no? Pero dito sa advanced task, uh, bagamat social justice, take note 
ang, ang outcome ngayon sa mga students who will be working on this is that uh, sila ngayon ay mag uh, ia analyze na nila yung kanilang konteksto sa ngayon, no? their present context. And then they will have to come up with ideas on their own ideas of social justice based on the issues and the concerns that they are facing now. No? And, and uh, kung, kung pupunta tayo sa sitwasyon ng United States, di ba? A few, a few weeks or a month ago, pinag ang, ang isang issue doon ay yung yung pag-atake sa mga Asians, no? Asian Americans. And years before that, yung yung pag-atake sa mga African Americans, no? So social justice, the children have to look at the issues that they face today and make their own um and express their own ideas based on that. So, yung outcome dito ay mas mataas kesa sa learning outcome dito sa basic task. Okay? All right. So, eto, siguro inano ko na lang. Uh, uh, ipinattern ko na lang doon sa sa yung recent example natin. Kunyari, oh, yung mga teachers ng Araling Panlipunan, grade 6, ang topic ay Revolusyong Pilipino ng 1896. And ang, ang uh, subtopic ay tungkol sa partisipasyon ng mga kababaihan sa revolution. No? So the basic learning outcome is uh, natatalakay ng mga estudyante ang partisipasyon ng kababaihan sa revolusyong Pilipino. Alright, so let's steer this for uh, the more advanced students. What learning outcome would you want advanced learners to achieve? Put your answer on the chat box. So, kung yung isa nagtatalak, nagtatalakay ng participation of women in, in the 1896 revolution, what would you want your advanced learners to do? Meron ba? All right. It's coming. Compare and contrast roles of women then and now using Venn diagram. Oh, no? So, kino compare and contrast, no? Yung, yung roles nila. Hmm. Oh, nga, no? That would be a, a good way, a, a good thing to look at. Kasi dati, uh, maaring ang you know, pag tinignan natin sina Gabriela Silang, sina Teresa Magbanwa, sina, sino pa ba ang mga outstanding women noong, ah hindi, si Magbanwa, yeah, Magbanwa uh, fought in the revolution also. Si Tandang Sora, no, uh, iba ang kanilang participasyon sa participasyon ngayon ng mga kababaihan sa Revolution in quotation marks. I don't want to, you know, whatever it is, uh, women are fighting for. That's the revolution, no? or whatever we are fighting for for our country. Ano ang uh, participation ng mga kababaihan? Okay, so uh, research about five top. Uh, the top five women who fought and made history during the revolution. Uh, yeah, puede, pero more on, more on, uh, siguro, siguro, if you will add something uh, to make it more 
uh, to to raise it to a, a higher level no pwede yon uh, ang kababaihan sa kasalukuyang pakikibaka ano ang patuloy na pinaglalaban ng mga kababaihan sa kasalukuyang panahon all right no evaluate how they have succeeded or failed and how they compare these with our powerful women of today all right no so nagkakaroon ng analysis doon ask students who they consider as modern filipina heroes no so oo nga no ano ang naging bunga ng partisipasyon ng kababaihan noong 1896 sa kasalukuyang panahon wow no ba titingnan mo ngayon yung result niyan sa ngayon all right so uh, nakakatuwa no na, na now um, it's not just in in, a, in an araling panlipunan class we're not just going to talk about what uh, um, tandang sora did or what gabriela uh, silang did but we're going to take yung heroism of the filipina from the past and bring it to the now and and the students will understand that as girls as women they have an important part in nation building all right so ang gaganda ng mga sagot um evaluate the historical progression of women's participation in public service from then from from the olden days to the present c very good <laughs> very good examples i may not be able to read everyone's answers pero nakikita ko po um na na talagang nagdi-differentiate kayo ng learning outcomes okay okay the fifth process na ko i only have 10 minutes okay that's the fifth um way of structuring um <laughs> um tiered assignments is by is tiering by process no ang, ang nakikita niyo pong litratong ito uh, familiar po sa ating na taga Metro Manila ay itong welcome rotonda sa sa may kahabaan ng ano Espanya tapos nagko-connect sa ano ba yon hindi hero uh, Basta yung Quezon Ave, all right, no? So, what am I trying to say here? Everyone, kunyari, pag sinabi kong, oh, kita kits tayo sa welcome rotonda, ha? all right. Some of you may be using different routes, no? Yung mga galing Las Piñas, iba ang rota ninyo. Yung mga galing uh, San Mateo ay iba ang rota nila yung mga galing Makati iba rin ang rota nila pero tutumbukin nating lahat ay yung welcome rotonda so there are different processes of learning the same thing so in tiering assign in tiering by process the students are working on similar outcomes using different processes to get there no so the same learning outcome but different ways of learning that outcome okay let's uh let's see okay here's an example again from from diane hecox uh let's ponder this the first task uh is review consumer information about laptops in consumer magazines identify relevant criteria for designing for deciding what you should look for when purchasing a laptop okay tapos uh dito naman sa sa isa interview at least three people who have bought a laptop identify criteria they used in making their decision to buy so yung 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 learning outcomes nila is to identify um, um, uh, 
um, relevant criteria in in purchasing uh, something. Yeah, I think this is a lesson on economics, no? Okay, criteria in purchasing. Okay, pero iba-iba yung proseso. Na yung iba tumitingin ng consumer consumer information. No, yung iba nag interview ng mga taong nakabili na ng laptop. No? Or pwede pa nga eh, mag interview sila ng mga taong nag-iisip pa lang ng nabibili ng laptop. No? So, so iba't ibang uh, proseso of finding the answer but they're going to learn the same thing. Ano ba yung mahalagang criteria pag kayo ay magde-decide na bumili ng isang produkto? Alright? Okay. And wala akong, wala akong itatanong ngayon sa inyo doon. Uh, so ngayon, nandito na tayo sa huling um, example. Uh, huling paraan ng pagstructure ng ng tiered assignment and that is tiering by product no so sa tiering by product ginagamit po natin ang Howard Gardner's uh, multiple intelligences and then um magpo-produce sila no nang mai-express nila ang kanilang natutunan in any of the, the product uh, of the of the wastes it um uh, they will express what they have learned using their different multiple intelligences now some products and uh, require more than just one no for instance gusto ninyong hmm, ano ba yan Kunyari, ang topic ay bullying. Balikan natin yung bullying kanina. No? So, kung, kung gusto ni nais nilang ipakita kung ano ba ang, ang uh, mga negative effects of bullying, if some students are uh, kinesthetic, kinesthetic and um, intrapersonal, pwede silang mag-skip, di ba? Kasi huhugot sila doon sa kanilang uh, uh, mga experiences and may action-action yan eh. Alright, so so that could be one. No? Those who are vi uh, more visual spatial can can uh, make a, a collage or a poster. No? Those who are musical and also um, linguistic, maaaring mag-compose ng isang awitin at i-perform i, um, ito. No? Or kung gusto nyong samahan pati ng, ng bodily kinesthetic, may kasamang dancing. <laughs> no? So um, they're learning the same thing but they are demonstrating what they learned in different ways. All right. So, so yun po ang anim na paraan. Oh, ito pa pala. Meron pa akong isang, isang um, what do you call this, uh, slide. No? So, tingnan ninyo. Pag verbal linguistic, you can... Um, the, the children are usually fond of stories, books, poetry, so you can ask them to write stories, scripts, poems, or even tell stories. Tingnan ninyo yung interpersonal. Ang mga batang interpersonal mahilig sa teams, group work, and specialist roles. No? And so uh, you can ask them to have... Uh, uh, you know, uh, to perform a play or a skit, magkaroon ng, ng debate or panel group discussion, yan ganyan, no? Or kung naturalist, uh, mahilig sila sa, sa uh, nature, then sa kanila naman nagko-collect, nagka-classify. All right. So there are different ways of demonstrating what they have understood. 
Okay? So, oh, meron pala akong isa dito, example. Identify characteristics of effective leaders by exploring various works of historical fiction. I think I all, I'm not sure if I, uh, kung saan ko nakuha to, kung ito ba'y inisip ko, okay, ke, baka ito kay galing din kay Hecox, no? So for those who are bodily kinesthetic, you can ask them to share characteristics of effective leaders through a skip, no? Featuring characters from historical fiction that represent various leadership traits. Or for those who are visual spatial, then they can construct bulletin board displays that illustrate the leadership traits of various characters from historical fiction. So yung isa, ma, yung iba pwedeng sumali sa skip, yung iba naman ay doon sa pagawa ng bulletin board display. But they're going to demonstrate the same thing. Yung, character, uh, yung, yung characteristics of effective historical leaders. All right? Okay. Ay, dito yata meron akong hinanda na na hall. Naku, asa na yan? Sandali, ha? Okay. Polling. All right. Now, I'd like you to answer. Sagutan nyo lamang po itong poll na ginawa ko. Uh, I don't know. Can you see it now? Ayan. Okay. You are now viewing the questions. So, there are six questions here. Just scroll down. One answer per question. And pag nasagutan nyo na po yung Yung anim, oh, wala pa rin? Teka, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the messages of my, my friends here. Okay, meron na. Can you see them? All right. So, number question number one, how would you tear? Huh? Is there an activity in which the same materials could be used? to work on both basic and more advanced learning outcomes. So how would you tear that? So sagutin nyo lang po. You choose one. Uh, 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 could, could you please... Can you, can you see it po? <laughs> All right. Meron po. Okay, sagutan niyo na po. Number two. How would you tear this? The question is, are there points when some students need more time to work on content or a skill and other students are ready for more advanced work? Okay, next. How would you tear this? Is there an activity in which students can benefit from working on the same outcomes but doing different kinds of work? Okay. Some of you, nakasagot na. How would you tear this? Is there an activity in which varied learning materials could be matched with student needs and readiness? Next. Number five. How would you tear? Is there an activity that would result in more than one way for students to show what they've learned? And finally, are there points when some students need to work on lower thinking skills while others are ready for higher order thinking skills? Okay, so... Uh, please uh, answer the questions. Okay, I'll give you... Could I give you... Kasi ma, ma, mauubos na po yung time natin. Uh, all right. Nakasagot na ba? All right. Um, what if I just end it now? 
Okay? Para lang makita ko kung ano yung mga sagot nung mga sumagot na. Okay, let's end the poll because we don't have time any longer. No? So, tingnan natin. Um, is there an activity in which the same materials could be used to work on both basic and more advanced learning outcomes? Yaan po ay tearing by learning outcomes. Okay? So, learning by outcomes po ang sagot niyan. So, you have basic and more advanced learning outcomes. Okay, next. So, number two, how would you tear this? Are there points when some students need more time to work on content or a skill and other students are ready for more advanced work? Hmm. Okay, this is by complexity. All right. How would you share this? Is there an activity in which students can benefit from working on the same outcome but doing different kinds of work process? All right. Yes, sharing by process. Oh. Is there an activity in which varied learning materials could be matched with student needs and readiness by resources? Very good. Okay. And then number five, is there an activity that could result in more than one way for students to show what they have learned by product, no? Tearing by, by product, yan. And finally, okay, are there points when some students need to work on lower thinking skills while others are ready for higher order thinking skills? Ang sagot po dyan, I know... Kanina sabi ko, teka, medyo confusing ito, yung uh, challenge and complexity. But remember this, when you're using Bloom's taxonomy to guide you, yan yung mga uh, thinking skills eh, that's challenge. Okay? Pag ang tiningnan mo ay yung how complicated the... the the learning the, the learning would be then it would be complexity okay kasi tinitina mo there might be those who are just at the beginning level and there are those who are already advanced all right ha hindi ko pala shinare your results okay so Okay, so, so ayan po. Yan yung sagot, no? All right. So, okay. So, ilabas ko muna to. What do I do? Ayan, no? So, um, let's move on. I ha These are slides kasi that... Okay, so ang tanong ngayon, Teacher Mighty, paano ba mag -tier? Binigay mo sa amin yung different ways of structuring pero hindi mo tinuro kung paano. Okay, so eto po. This is based on Conklin and Sorrell's um, suggestions. No? So number one, pick the grade level objective you will be covering. No? So uh, yung, yung on grade level muna. And then you decide, ano bang skill, concept, or generalization that the student need to learn? No? Okay. And then, doon sa on grade level, plan an activity that teaches the skill, the concept, or the generalization. So on grade level, uh, Maganda sana, best completed in groups, or pwede, pero pwede din naman na, na uh, individual ito. Alright? So, una, you work on the on-grade level objective and activity. Okay? 
And then, sa number four, pag nagawa mo na yung lesson plan for those who are in um, on-grade level function, now you need to examine the, your planned activity. How complex it is, is it? How challenging, how challenging is it? Can it be simplified for those who are functioning um, uh, below the grade level? Or can it be made more complex uh, for, for those who are advanced? Tatanungin uh, niyo, for those na, na kung magkakaiba sila ng reading ability, um, Paano ko simplify yung reading material? Or how can I make the reading material more challenging and more informative for those who are advanced? Okay? And then, ayan. So you already have your on-grade level assignment. Ngayon, gagawa ngayon kayo ng below-grade level um assignment and above grade level. So pag sinabi natin it's for students who are, you know, still need help, uh, maybe nandun sa introductory level or yung, or um, uh, nandun sila sa lower order thinking skills pa, then uh, the lesson has to be in small parts and kailangan mayroong scaffolding by the teacher. So you need to, to be there to provide guidance. And then, kailangan nyo ng visual aids to help them understand better. No? Kasi nabivisualize nila. Now, for those who are functioning above grade level, then uh, you could think of more open-ended, creativity-centered, or research-based activities that tap into their higher order thinking skills. No? It doesn't mean that they don't need guidance. You as a teacher should be going around the classroom um, after, after spending time with those functioning below grade level. You, you go to the other groups and see how they're doing, provide feedback, encourage them, okay? And uh, uh, yung, yung ganon. So now you are, your role is facilitating now you're facilitating, you're monitoring, you're, you're providing feedback, but they're learning on their own if it's going to be a group work or collaborative work. Okay. No? So place the students into ability groups based on pre-assessment. No? And then, so pag nandiyan na sila sa classroom, you distribute the assignment sheets to the appropriate students and proceed with the lesson. Okay, so alala ko, the first time we met two weeks ago, uh, sabi ko, some teachers nag, nag, nag tatanong, Teacher Mighty, kailangan ba tatlong klaseng lesson plan ang gagawin ko? Or, or kasi may, may student with disability, merong mga students with need that needs help. So, kailangan ba tatlo, apat na lesson plans ang gagawin ko sa isang leksyon? Hindi po. Ang gagawin nyo lang po, uh, iisang lesson plan, but you will have to to state there how you will differentiate for the different students who need differentiating. Uh, all right? So, yon. And then, pag, pag school time na, uh, subject nyo na, then you, you teach and then you give the activities to the student. All right? So, here's a quick look. This is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, na lang po ang ating, ang ating uh, what do you call this, um, uh, uh, review. No? If you're tearing by challenge, the students are working on tasks at different levels of difficulty according to Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive skills. All right. So challenge, you connect that with Bloom's taxonomy. Complexity. 
If you're caring by complexity, some students need more time to work on content or a skill, and other students are ready for more advanced work. And so you, you uh, tier by complexity. Caring by resources, you match uh, the students' needs and readiness to the different resources that you can offer uh, uh, according to reading level or um, uh, whatever it is you know, na they know. Na. Caring by outcomes, you use the same materials uh, in both basic and more advanced learning outcomes. So may basic out, uh, learning outcome ka, pero may more advanced learning outcomes, but they're learning the same material. Okay? So process, students work on the same outcome, but do different kinds of work, different ways of reaching the goal. And then um, caring by product, students are given more than one way to show what they have learned. Using Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. All right. So, haha. <laughs> hindi na. Wag, hindi na po yan. <laughs> okay. So, um, I would like to open the floor now for questions um i'm sure that uh, my questions na na nakalap sina teachers uh, christine and uh, angel okay the floor is open for your questions after the teacher mighty wala yeah. po Ah, walang, uh, walang questions sa chat uh -huh. box kasi ano na uh, masyadong na-engage sila doon sa activities. Ah. So, kaya, oh, oh. kaya siguro hindi na sila nakapag-isip um, ng questions nila. Oh, oh, Thank no. you for for participating everybody. Very very active kayo. Um, yeah. Mukhang mas, oh. uh, mas uh, maganda yata ang mag-participate pag malamig yung panahon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Ano, um, but um, if you still have questions, we are open. You may type them in the chat box, so I could read them out to Teacher Mighty. Okay. Wala yata ng questions. Ayun. Um, good morning, ma'am. I would like to ask how are differentiated tasks being graded or is it necessary to grade them all? That's from Anel Carousos. Okay. Um, kasi nga po, differentiated sila, no? So, if, if you're, if you're, you have differentiated by challenge or complexity, so magkaiba din ang ang kailangan na tinitingnan ninyo sa paggrade pero una una you have to you have to uh, uh, remember that hindi lamang po tayo sa grading tumitingin um, kasi the grade could be a feedback no um, ang mahalaga po yung feedback is for students to know how they are how they are doing, no? how they are learning. No? So, now, pero kung talagang magbibigay nga tayo ng iba, iba't ibang challenge, um, una, uh, maganda kung mayroon tayong rubric para doon sa activities na gagawin nila so that alam nila that there are still, kahit magkakaiba yan na activities, there are still some criteria that we are looking at and uh, that we will grade. No? Um, yun. So that's one way. Kailangan po may rubric. Number two, um, I think it would be unfair naman kung, uh, kung let's say, yung students who are functioning at uh, higher complexity tapos uh, students who are functioning at, at, uh, at a simple level ay magkakaroon ng parehong grado just because they did very well 
in both. So you will have to think about, you know, kung, kung, kung ano ba ang grade na mas babagay kung for students who are functioning sa ganitong group. No? Mayroon kang rubric pero mayroon ding uh, sasabihin mo, okay, what kind of work would um, this, what kind of grade would this activity give the students? It, is it an A, a B, or a C? Is it a, a 95, a 90, an 85? Or, you know, you have to decide that. No? Ang, ang kabutihan lang po dito ay mas magiging makatotohanan yung grado na ibibigay ninyo uh, kasi nakikita ninyo na yung studyante ay natututo at his or her level. No? Imbis na we're all teaching at the level of uh, some students and then many could not catch up, tapos ang gagawin natin, pasa na lang. Ano? Ipapasa na lang. No? Kung ipapasa natin, kailangan uh, makatotohanan naman yung, yung, yung marka na ibibigay natin. At uh, alam natin na may natutunan sila doon sa level na kung of, of their readiness and may challenge. No? So you will have to think about that. Uh, may rubric uh, kailangan. Uh, Teacher Lutze, do you have yes. any? Yes. Another question, Teacher Maiti, is is this applicable in distance learning? Opo. I think yung tiered um, assignments. Opo, pwede po yan. Um, kahit, kahit um, uh, pwede po yan no? na, na gamitin ninyo. Um, basta alam ninyo kung ano yung grouping. For instance, um, let's say you're going to tier by product, no? So, ang grouping mo dyan ay hindi by, uh, posibleng by, by, uh, by interest. Okay. Kailang maganda dyan yung kung, kung if you're going to tier by product, you group them by interest. So that, uh, dahil interest nila yan, they would be able to produce a very good uh, material. No? Uh, pwede po ito sa online, online learning. Uh, you, you, you have groups. You can even put them in, ano yung tawag doon? Yung, yung rooms, breakout rooms. Breakout? So that, yeah, breakout rooms so that they can work together in the breakout room. And then after the period, they come together to present whatever it is that they have learned. No? Or kung mahaba yung right. activity, sa, sa MA kasi ginagawa ko, I give them the assignment and they work on it for a week. <laughs> no? uh, oh, oh. Uh, asynchronous ang learning nila. No? They work on it for a week. Uh, depende sa, sa gano ka kalaki yung activity. There was a time nagbigay ako ng activity sa kanila they were they were grouped and i think i gave them 3 weeks to work on it no so uh, i would meet them um every week to lecture to 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 um to continue the learning pero yung ginagawa nilang project para doon sa isang lesson namin 3 weeks ago ginagawa na nila yan asynchronously and then on the deadline or on the make update na, na shinare ko sa inyo uh, doon sa last meeting, isasubmit nila. And the, I, I give them the opportunity to present their output um, sa buong klase na. Ayon. All right. Thank you, Teacher Mites. And thank you, uh, Marilu Valdez, for that question. Yung next question po ay coming from Ms. Rosemary Amparado. Sabi niya, is it possible for learners to choose which assignment they want to answer instead of the teacher assigning uh, specific assignments to specific learners? 
Yes, pwede po. Um, an example would be, naglalaro po kayo ng tic-tac-toe, ano? So those are two, two straight lines going down and two straight lines going from side to side. So now you have nine boxes. But th this would be challenging, huh? <laughs> okay, so example lang po ito. Nine, nine boxes, nine um, things that you would like them to accomplish for the unit. Uh, for the unit po ito, ho, or, or maybe for the quarter, depende sa inyo kung paano inyo gagawin. Pero yung, yung highest, uh, yung, yung level sa taas, diba? tatlong, tatlong tiers yan, pwedeng yung activities doon ay, let's say, 20 points each. No? Doon sa middle, maaaring, let's say, um, 30 points each. Tapos yung pinakababa, 50 points. Or kung gusto nyo, 100. So depende nga po yun sa, sa complexity at kung, kung ano yung plano nyo. Ano yung, yung, yung plano nyo sa pagtuturo. No? And then, maglalaro po sila ng tic-tac-toe. Those that are at the 20 points level, kailangan pare-pareho po ng degree of difficulty ang mga yan. All of them are worthy of 20 points. So, pipili po sila doon. No? Kunyari, for lesson one, o doon sila pipili, doon sa tatlong yon. Pero, you have to, to uh, let the students know na kung saan sila unang pumili, mu mula doon sila maglalaro ng tic-tac-toe. Di po ba ang tic-tac-toe, you can go down or diagonal. Diba? So there are three ways, three, three paths of going down and there are two paths of going diagonal. Hindi po pwede, although alam ko sa tic-tac-toe, pwede kang manalo ng ng naka-straight naka lang ano, doon sa by level. Pero uh, hindi po pwede yon kasi lahat yun 20 points. E di 60 points lang siya. Whereas pag nag-play siya ng diagonally or, or vertically, meron siyang 20 plus 30 plus 50. Ilan yun? <laughs> oh, di 100 points. Talo siya. Dahil 60 points na siya nagtrabaho sa ganun. Or, or uh, pa ganyan. Alright. So, basta po, the instruction has to be clear. You have to play tic-tac-toe vertically or diagonally. And then they choose. So, uh, yun po, that's one way. Alright. Or, or can, uh, yes. No. Sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. Uh -oh. Or you can give them uh, ahead of time Ito na, ito yung mga activities. Sila na ang papipiliin ninyo kung anong, ano yung activity na gusto nilang gawin for that lesson. Okay. All right. Teacher Mites, we only have one more question. Oh, yes. This is from Ms. Lea Gracilia. Yes. What various assessment tools could be used to ensure that the students' levels, interests, learning styles, and readiness are properly assessed? I okay. think partially you have answered this kanina. Oh, oh. Um, I also answered that uh, two weeks ago. No, uh, for for the um, kunyare for the interest and learning styles, uh, mayroon pong uh, pwede po kayong gumawa ng ng learning style and the interest survey. Uh, actually, po marami pong examples niyan in the internet. No, uh, for for varying lev grade levels, tingnan yun lang po. No, yung iba yan uh, depende sa kung ano talaga yung gusto yung uh, tingnan. For instance, sa interest, alam din yung kunyare na later on uh, may project kayo na na you're going to differentiate by by product. So, pwede pasagutin yun na sila ng isang multiple intelligences uh, survey. Diba? Uh, or kunyari, uh, later on, um, kung, kung sa readiness naman, you can look at their uh, class records. How, are, how did they do in math? 
or maybe talk to their previous math teacher. Ano ang, ano ang, how, how is this student in, in math? No? Uh, saan siya magaling? Saan siya nahihirapan? Y- yung ganun. Or you can even interview the student. Uh, magkaroon ng questionnaire at the, at the start of the school year. What, what do you find easy in mathematics? Ano yung madali para sa iyo sa math? Uh, ano na, saan ka naman nahihirapan? No? So, mula mismo sa bata ay, ay nakukuha mo yung informasyon. No? Um, paano, one, one question could be, paano, anong tulong ang nais mong maibigay sa iyo upang uh, mas maging effective ang pag-aral mo sa mathematics. You know, some students will would say, sana po magala ng konte, <laughs> na no, ganon kasi ganong kasimple. Sa yung iba naman sa sabihin, ma'am, pwede niyo po bang i-explain sa akin ng mas detalyado? Hindi po ako kasing bilis nung ibang mga kaklasiko. E, yung mga ganon. So, uh, uh, or or some students would say ma'am na, natatakot po ako pag tinatawag ako eh ng 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 ano ba to ng class class um, participation yung tatawagin Jose ano sagot mo dito and then si Jose nararato no siguro one thing you can do pag ganun ang problema niya beforehand before the class uh, you can tell him na Jose uh, mamaya tatawagin kita at ito yung tanong, no? Ito yung tanong, ngayon pa lamang isipin mo na yung sagot mo para mamaya ay uh, tatawagin kita, mas handa ka na. You know, so so there are different strategies para para malaman din, no? So uh, you can have um, interviews, uh, interview of the student or or a questionnaire or a survey form or look at at the school records para makita kung saan ba talaga uh, na, uh, saan subject needs help yung estudyante. Alright? I hope meron pong uh, na yun. So, yes, thank you, Teacher Mighty. You're welcome po. Yes, um, we have, we actually have um, two more questions, but um, since we promised that we'll end at 12, at saka yung iba Uh-oh. kasi medyo labas pasok na dahil yung connection um yeah, talaga yeah. ano na no unstable na yung mga connection so yung questions from Miss Ian Liwanag at saka from Miss Jennifer Padlaganas maybe teacher Mighty could answer it in the chat box while we continue on to the next um part no uh-huh. of our webinar um pwede mm-hmm. teacher Mighty Yes, ma'am. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Uh, teka, Sa ano na lang po. Ayan, may mga responses na rin from, um, nag-respond na rin si teacher, um, teacher Leah sa chat box natin. Dun sa, mga, dun sa mga individual or sa mga mas oh, specific great. na questions from Uh-oh. our participants. All right. But at this point, maybe we can go to the next um, part. Thank you for those who participated for all your questions. Um, teacher Christine. Yes po, ayan. Thank you so much po sa lahat po ng questions ninyo at I'm sure po na marami tayong natutunan kay Teacher Myra. Ayan again, for the evaluation form po of this um, webinar, nilagay ko po sa ating group chat or sa chat box rather ang link. Ayan, pwede po itong sagutan until 6 p.m. today at ang mga makakasagot po ay makakatanggap din po ng e-certificate. Ayan, within a few days. And also po, maybe remind everyone to please, please, please refrain from uh, sharing the evaluation forms link to others. Ayan, para fair po sa ating lahat na nakadulong ngayong araw. And also po, ayan, bago tayo umalis mamaya, magkakaroon po tayo ng picture taking. Kung okay lang po sa inyo, pero po yung mga may hirapan mag-open uh, ng camera ay okay lang din po. Yes, yun lamang po ang ating reminders and of course for the closing remarks, 
May I call in again, Teacher Lutze? Ako pala yung magkaklose. Akala ko si Teacher Leah. Kasi <laughs> na ba? Okay din naman. Ako teacher. Ako ba? I'm sorry. Ah, sige, ako na. Um, actually, ano, wala kaming ibang masabi kundi mala, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng dumalo ngayon. Alam ko po na very challenging po. Kung sa face-to-face ang challenges natin ay ang traffic at siguro dahil maulan ang baha, um, dito naman po ay bumabaha po ang labas-pasok ng, um, ng, ano natin, ng webinar natin dahil marami po ang nadidisconnect. Pero hindi po kayo bumitaw at... Um, Thank you so much po for uh, spending your Saturday morning with us again. We hope po na marami po sa mga questions ninyo ang nasagot. Ngayon, kung meron pa po kayong mga ibang questions, then um, you could always uh, message dyan po sa chat box ngayon. And I think sa evaluation, di ko lang po alam kung sa evaluation form, meron pong uh, mga questions sa part doon. Or um, get in touch with us. I don't know how. Maybe through email or um, yung sa wala kasi pang website ang ano eh ang sped mismo no um, but uh, we're just around so anytime na may mga questions kayo we could ano we could always try our best to answer your questions pa and um, siguro hindi na din hindi ako magpa-promise pero ito try namin yung best namin kasi um, nag-chat nga kami ni Teacher Lia that uh, mukhang uh, magandang magkaroon ng mga follow up pa na na mga activities no hindi lang ganito but siguro yung parang mas hands on pa no that we would be able to um, learn more uh, about this topic and maybe even more pa iba pang mga topics na um, pwede kaming makatulong especially when um, it comes to uh, special education topics and inclusive education topics no so maraming salamat marami akong nakikitang mga um, comments sa uh, chat box Um, you're saying na marami kayong natutunan, maraming take away, and marami pong nagpapasalamat kay Teacher Mighty. Sobrang busy po si Teacher Mighty ngayon because nagtatapos po siya ng dissertation niya. But she took time and she took one for the SPED area para po, um, para po meron tayong panibagong matutunan ngayong uh, umaga. So thank you very much, Teacher Mighty. You're welcome. Thank you, Teacher uh, Leah, for being here, uh, SPED coordinator namin. Um, is teacher uh, Wina here, ang aming DCI chair. Maraming salamat din po kay teachers Christine, teacher, kay teacher Christine, teacher Christine, dalawa sila, teacher CJ, at uh, si teacher Mo, na I think tutulong sa mga certificates. Uh, thank you so much for all your help. Lahat po ng dumalo, yung mga alumni namin, yung mga um, teachers na din ng mga alumni namin ngayon, yung mga um, ibang teachers pa na nakilala namin through other webinars uh, at lahat po ng mga dumalo ngayon na um, napadaan lang po sa Facebook. Nakita kami, nakita po yung um, um, gustong i-share ni Teacher Mighty ngayon. Uh, thank you so much po. And we hope that you will pray with us na sa susunod pa po ay magkaroon pa ng maraming opportunities like this one. And uh, this is, in, of course, in celebration of the 103rd foundation anniversary of the UP College of Education. Ito po ang munting tulong na nabibigay po ng special education area. So thank you so much once again. We hope to see you soon. Stay safe and dry, everyone, dahil um, maulan na maulan at uh, parang ang sakuna ay parang, parang sabay-sabay sila. Meron ng, meron ng virus, meron pang... Um, ano tawag dito, meron pang bagyo at kaninang umaga ay may earthquake. So mag-ingat po tayong lahat, padayon po sa ating lahat.